Hello, everybody. Hi, good Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> so we're getting into the expanse. This is an expanse video. Ooh, we want to explore the exploration of the expanse, and this echoes our own age of explorations between the 15th and 17th century, when Europeans explored the west and east with this this old world that had kind of uh, consolidated itself, pushing Europeans to go out to uh, get valuable resources okay. and, and bring those back. Within Europe, the situation had sort of gelled into, well, now the whole continent is Christian. Okay. Right? That, that took a while. And that's uh, kind of similar to the expanse where the whole earth is now one government. Yeah. Right? So if it's one government, so let's go outside and look for some other stuff. Yeah. The Earth started out colonizing uh, Mars and then later the belt. So if you're into the expanse, subscribe, click the bell to not miss any video about the expanse and check out the podcast down below. And so you come from the Netherlands. Yeah. Your, your nation has been prominent in these explorations. Yeah, but the, the initial uh, drive really came out of the Iberian Peninsula. A bunch of things had come together there. So one of them was, okay, the Reconquista were complete or near complete. So that's, that local business, so, uh, so to speak, was, was ready. Technology had advanced as well. So, uh, for example, the Portuguese had developed these ships known as caravels, mm. which could sail faster, <laughs> Uh, also more in the wind, so they could explore in, in different directions. There's also a mirroring uh, aspect to that in the expanse. The Epstein, 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 whatever, uh, uh, drive, where you could go faster and get farther in a way that we now cannot. So once you have that, you can get to Mars, not in three years, but I don't know, a few days. And so with these caravels, all of a sudden you can go into the Atlantic, further and yeah. discover first like uh, the Azores and other islands there and then look further uh, further ahead and see okay can is can we actually get around Africa can we get into the Indian Ocean can we bypass first of all the Ottomans who had mm. uh, taken Constantinople and dominated the Eastern Mediterranean and can we get around those asshole Italians that are dominating the spice trade within Europe? Okay. Right, so there was also just like a business interest. Also, um, finance had sort of advanced to, to the point where yeah. there was actually this notion of, well, we do some sort of expedition that uh, has investors yeah. looking for a payoff. Yeah. We pay you now a little bit and then we'll get a lot of money back if you are su successful. Right. So this was a marriage between uh, nations and corporations. Yeah. Not yet corporations as we know them now, but like the private sector and the public, uh, the public sector. Yes. Which is also very similar to the expanse. You see that the farther away you, uh, you go from the inner planets, the more corporations have sway and control and political control. A favor someone down on earth is doing for a shareholder. But well, we're groveling to the shareholders now. They are in charge of security and mining and it's very often very hard to differentiate where the public sector ends and the private se uh, sector begins. You need to get boots on Phoebe first. That sounds like your mess. And sending a UN warship to a meaningless outpost like Phoebe will just draw more attention to it. If you want a weapon system for my project, then it's our mess. That is actually a lot like the colonialism. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so a lot of these uh, colonial ventures including you know settlements trade posts were not really national initiatives but uh, you know the way now uh, it, you imagine that uh, let's say uh, uh, google owns an island uh, back then you know, like the united east india corporation had their own posts uh, trade posts and uh, settlements 
uh, along the way to uh, to the col to the colonies or to the the points where they would pick up spices right. or other things. And there was also some rivalry between the East India Company and, and the Crown. Sure. And then only over time uh, it became nationalized, but that was just way in the future. I will rain hellfire down on them all. I will freeze their assets, cancel their contracts, cripple their business. And I have the power to do it, because I am the fucking hero who helped save Mother Earth from the cataclysm that Jules Pierre Mao unleashed. Tell his children that government is more powerful than any corporation. So in the expanse, they're going out to the, to the asteroids to, to take ice. Ceres was once covered in ice. Enough water for a thousand generations until Earth and Mars stripped it away for themselves. So from the perspective of indigenous people living in colonized communities, colonization meant impoverishment in many forms. The loss of land for use, the loss of life itself at an unprecedented scale, the loss of long-held religious beliefs, and the loss of all sorts of community assets. And they are bringing people over there to mine them. So in some ways it's different than real history, in some ways it's not that different. Mm -hmm. There are no indigenous people already there, but the but uh, Europeans did take people and bring them over to, you know, be slaves. Be slaves were com plantations. Yes. Yes. And that created uh, all kinds of national identities and new societies that kind of uh, mirror or similar to what's going on in the belt uh, with new languages, new cultures, new foods. So the, the, the age of exploration has been the biggest event in human history and probably ever will be just because of also this contact between uh, human populations that had been separate for tens of thousands of years wow. So with different immune systems, also other species that were dragged around all over the planet. Right. Um, right, like crops and animals, and, uh, but also diseases, pathogens. Right, so the diseases and the pathogens, maybe in the expanse, we can say that that's like the, the, the gravity aspect. You can't take people who have lived in the belt their entire lives and bring them back from zero G or third G, bring them back to Earth. I'm sorry, the gravity of a real planet hurts. Maybe that could be like... Uh, I don't know, similar to the diseases that were brought back and forth, mostly forth, not so much uh, back. And the fact that gradually uh, the inners look down on the belters and see them as uh, less than human, that's uh, also, you know, very similar to what we had over here. And it shows the arbitrary nature of the in-group, out-group feelings because, so they have traits that you can immediately, you can immediately know that they are belters because they look way different, but the races there are totally mixed. You have people from all kinds of places uh, on earth. So that kind of shows uh, the inherent human uh, need to put like, to, to divide into groups. This is them, they are us because they're there, even though if I lived there now for a few years, I would also become taller. No, they're different mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. from us. Yeah. Also, the, this, this looking down on the, the people in the colonies, uh, including their language, which they actually do uh, mm. pretty well in the expanse. Yeah. Like, uh, the languages that evolved in European colonies are, so, are looked down on as, oh, this is Pidgin, English, French, Spanish, Dutch. Yeah. And these European languages, they are, you know, proper languages when, of course, you know, Spanish and Portuguese are Pidgin Latin and Dutch is uh, Pidgin German or something, right? <laughs> but, but so this, this way of yeah. sort of looking down on what are perfectly legitimate languages, that, yeah. like, like languages evolves. Yeah. But, All the time. but it's yeah. like looking down your nose on what they speak in the colonies, they actually do that in the expanse as well, very well with yeah. the Belter language. And also they use 
not only outside uh, forces to, to keep security, but they also lo use local population in the belt in order to enforce the security of the belt, basically make sure that the interests of the people back home, the corporations, that's also similar like in India, that was uh, very prevalent that they used the local Indian populations in order to subjugate and exploit the Indian population there, even though they outnumbered them by, I don't know how, how much, but by an incredible number. Very, very few British were actually in India. Batch. Days coming soon, Kea. And when the blood is on the wall, Sasaki, which side you're on? Yeah, I'll know. See you then. Well, voila. What is well, voila? Traitor to my people. What the Dutch did in the East Indies was that, um, so the first spice islands to be colonized by the Dutch were the Moluccans, uh, okay. which had actually previously been Portuguese colonies. Mm -hmm. And the people there were disproportionately uh, employed in the colonial army to suppress the rest. Ah. And they're kind of, because in the India is an archipelago and different islands ah. all have kind of different ethnicities. And so they, of course, the way empire works is like you displace people right. in another setting and they don't have local loyalties yeah. and so that works very well to oppress the rest. Mm. So another thing that happened, so the, the, the British presence in the uh, Indian subcontinent created a new national identity that never existed in the history of this subcontinent. They were like, okay, we are all subjugated by them, so hence we are all the same. The, then there was the partition, but the south and the north were never united in any way throughout Indian history. In a similar way, the, the, the builders, even though they are so far away from each other, the fact that the system is set up this way, they, they feel that they have a shared uh, experience and this is a very good basis for uh, national identity that has never existed before, unlike our national identity, which is totally organic and not made up at all and just like a natural process of uh, things. <laughs> and just like uh, in general, I feel that what they do very well in the show is just to replicate this excitement of exploring something new, getting to new places. Its conquest deserves the best of all mankind. Not microscopically, microscopically finding like a new ant or something. Just going to a new What's world. That? Sorry, not are, not sitting are you down. Are taxonomists? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, because this is the, the, this is something that only few people can relate to. But going to a new world, this is exciting for everybody. Also for the taxonomists. If there's life there. Yeah. If there's life Otherwise, there. Yeah. <laughs> So this is something that we don't have now and there is a good reference for that in season three that if there's a door, the human instinct is to go through it. You can't stop it. You can't stop it. But I think you're overestimating the, the pull in comparison with the push. Like, okay, there's the pull of the unknown and we can go to new places. Okay. Oh my God, isn't that interesting? But just like with this age of exploration, in the Renaissance, there was actually a lot of push factors, but also, for example, the space race. I mean, the, the, the reason why the Russians and the Americans went to space, okay, kind of because we can, and oh my yeah. God, isn't that interesting, but also to beat the other guys, uh -huh. right? So these push factors on uh -huh. Earth to right. show what we can do and to be there first and to then dominate space. Right. But so it's more push factors than pull factors, and, and I, th I think that is a very common trend. Right, so like the tension between uh, Mars and Earth pushes them to explore further things, technology, science, new places, stuff like that. Okay, okay, so what do you think? What do you think? 
Be sure to mention in the comments and if you like The Expanse, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you will not miss any of our Expanse videos and our Expanse podcasts. Yes. The, the link is in the description to our podcast. We have Expanse content over there. And the more traction these videos and podcasts get, the more content uh, we will create. So, I don't know, share with your friends, social media, subreddits, whatever. So, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you patrons for supporting the channel. We'll see you all next time. Bye. Bye. We meet in an hour of change and challenge, in a decade of hope and fear, in an age of both knowledge and ignorance.